It might seem like magic. You feel bad, you take a pill, and within a couple hours, you'll notice relief from your headache, swollen knee, or heartburn. But what happened between taking the drug and feeling better? It certainly wasn't magic, although the way it works in your body is pretty amazing. I'm gonna use the word drug a lot to talk about medicine. Now, this might bring to mind some negative association, but I encourage you to have an open mind when it comes to this word. Sure, drugs can refer to legal and illegal substances that people abuse, but the first definition in the Oxford Living Dictionary is a medicine or other substance which has a physiological effect when ingested or otherwise introduced into the body. This means that, in addition to prescribed medicine, any food or herb you take in a medicinal way is a drug. So if you're regularly using turmeric, St. John's War, or essential oils for their medicinal properties, you're using them as drugs, and you probably should talk to your doctor about it. Okay, enough definitions. Let's talk about the journey a drug takes through your body to carry out its therapeutic effect. When you swallow a pill, it travels into your stomach, where it'll start to break down. If the pill is a tablet or a capsule, the active ingredient is mixed with many other inactive chemicals to help it along its way. There are chemical compounds that allow the drug to be compressed into a tablet, others that make the pill big enough to swallow, compounds that prevent it from sticking to the lining of your digestive system, and molecules that help it to break up at just the right time. The stomach is a harsh environment. It's really acidic and filled with proteins called enzymes that break down the nutrients in our food to produce energy. The chemical bonds that make up the foods we eat are surprisingly similar to those in a medicinal compound, so some of the drug might be degraded in the stomach. Certain drugs, depending on their chemical properties, could theoretically absorb through the stomach cells and into your body, but that's kind of difficult. The drug doesn't spend that much time in the stomach, the surface area is small compared to the twisting, convoluted intestine, and there's a protective layer of mucus on the inside of the stomach that prevents the acid inside from digesting the stomach itself. All of these things impede absorption. Also, a lot of drugs, especially those affecting the brain, can react reversibly with the acid in the stomach and become charged in that low pH environment. If the drug is going to pass through the lining of the digestive system, it is best if it is not charged. This is because the lining of the digestive tract is made up of a cell type called epithelial cells, which are surrounded by a greasy membrane. The composition of the innermost part of the lining is rather similar to cooking oil. Now salt, which is made up of charged components, doesn't dissolve in my oil. Compounds need to be similar to mix. Oil and water don't mix because they are dissimilar, but oil and butter do because they're both greasy. You can remember this concept with the phrase, like dissolves like. If something is charged, it's harder for it to interact with the greasy lining of the cells and pass through them. But once a drug moves into the less acidic, higher pH environment of the intestine, it becomes uncharged and can absorb by what we call passive diffusion. Other drugs can actually fool a transporter protein that is used by vitamins or nutrients to make its way through the cells of the intestinal lining by a process called active transport. Now before it can make its way into the bloodstream, an orally administered drug encounters the liver. The liver contains lots of enzymes that can do things like add oxygen atoms onto the molecule. This liver metabolism is called first pass and can sometimes inactivate a drug completely. If this happens, the drug cannot be administered orally and may need to be taken intravenously or sublingually. Adding oxygen atoms onto molecules is a great way to make them even more water soluble. And we say that the addition of oxygen makes a compound more polar. Very polar compounds are readily eliminated by the kidneys in the urine, so these reactions are nature's way of protecting the body from foreign compounds. The portion of the drug that has not been lost in the absorption process or destroyed by enzymes can make its way into the bloodstream, where it is quickly delivered widely to cells throughout the body. But a well-designed drug will only work where it's needed and doesn't do anything where it's not needed. The vast majority of drugs are going to interact in some way with a protein to carry out their therapeutic effect. 
Proteins are long chains of amino acids synthesized in your body. The chains fold up into a three-dimensional shape that's critical to its function. Some proteins even fold in such a way that the amino acids they are made of can promote chemical reactions. And they can do the reactions faster than we ever could do in the lab. Billions and billions of reactions a second. These proteins are called enzymes, and they carry out the chemical reactions that are constantly going on in your body to turn your food into energy, build your DNA, store sugar, make hormones, and countless other vital processes that keep us alive and healthy. Receptors are another very common drug target. These are proteins either located on the surface of cells or within the cells on the surface of the nucleus. Binding of a drug to a receptor can either turn on or turn off a process in the cell. Let's look at a quick example of how an enzyme can be regulated by a drug. Most often, drugs are used to turn off enzyme reactions. They do this by binding the enzyme, interacting with it in such a way that prevents the usual chemical reaction in a process called inhibition. Imagine you twist your knee and it swells. Inflammation is a good thing here. The process brings in cells that can heal the tissue. However, inflammation can also play a role in chronic disease. There are many factors that contribute to the complex inflammation process, but one of the significant ones are molecules called prostaglandins. When you have an injury, your body will respond by producing more enzymes that make prostaglandins. If your swelling persists too long, your doctor might tell you to take an anti-inflammatory like aspirin or ibuprofen. These molecules fit into the spot of the enzyme where the prostaglandin-forming reaction usually occurs block it from happening, and inflammation is reduced. Now, a drug doesn't just stay active in your body forever. Just like in the liver, your body is constantly trying to protect you by eliminating foreign substances. Remember those enzymes that add oxygen to molecules and help them be eliminated? Well, those are found throughout the body, and there are other enzymes that enable the drug to react in different ways, all of which make it more polar and more water-soluble. When the drug is moving around through your body, enzymes are reacting with it. Once a reaction occurs that changes the drug into an inactive metabolite, its effect in the body stops. Once enough polar groups are added to the molecule, the drug passes rapidly to the kidneys, where it is excreted in the urine. The time it takes for half of the drug to be excreted is called the half-life of the drug, and the frequency at which you're prescribed a drug is related to the half-life. For example, a drug with a 12-hour half-life may need to be administered twice a day. The journey of a drug through the body is a complicated process, but if a drug is designed well, enough of it will make it to your cells where it can interact with proteins to treat ailments and disease. As you might imagine, it takes a lot of work to carefully design a pill that will let a drug molecule be absorbed, survive in the body, reach its target, and make you better. Fortunately, teams of talented scientists are working on these problems every day to improve your health. This video is the first in a series about medicine dedicated to my mom. If you enjoy learning about how medicines work in your body, subscribe to my channel, and if you'd like to see anything in particular, leave me a message in the comments.